Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to an arena open draft here on the channel. This is the first draft of day two, so it is four matches, and if I can go three and one or better, I will qualify for the second draft where I'll be drafting for up to $2,000. So there's a lot on the line here. If you do enjoy this video, hit that like button to let me know that you like watching High Stakes Limited, and I'll make more videos like this in the future. Also, comment below with your questions, thoughts, feedback, encouragement, all of that good stuff. Whew, here we go. What do we get? What do we get? Ho, 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 ho. Okay. So the rare is actually okay as a rare. Um, it just kind of does what you want out of a out of a card. Blade of Shared Souls. But I don't like being in blue. And I think there's better options. So I'm not going to take it. The main consideration here is between Annex Sentry which is a very good uncommon, uh, just like gets rid of something, and Hex Gold Slash, which is probably the best common. So it's kind of a close pick between those two. <laughs> Ironically, if I took the Blade, I'd probably wield the wheel the Meld Web Strider. If I take the Annex Sentry, I don't think there's a chance of wheeling the Basilica Shepherd. If I take Slash, I'm probably going to wheel Kill Dotha Cackler, so that's something to consider. I think Slash is a very good option, but Annex Sentry is probably better. I'm just going to start by taking the best card, and I think that's Annex Sentry. Hex Gold Slash is great, but Sentry is just, like, a really, really strong card. And I don't mind playing white at all. Okay. So we kind of get a little bit rewarded, because there's no red card in this pack as a follow-up. I mean, I wouldn't want to take Molten Rebuke. There is an Uncommon Missing. I do like Mirror Convert as a 2-drop. It'll fit into any deck that I play. And uh, you just want to make sure you have enough two drops. So that's a good option here. There's also Crawling Chorus as like a one drop for a super aggressive toxic deck. But you don't need to be a super aggressive toxic deck for this card to be good. And so I'm just going to take a more mid-rangey card that fits into any strategy. Because I'm by no means committed to white here. Uh, I don't think any of these blue cards are particularly exceptional. Uh, these black cards aren't great. The Lattice Blade Mantis is pretty strong. But I would probably take Crawling Chorus still second out of this pack. But I think Mere Convert is the best bet. Okay, so now we're two picks in. We've got a white card and a uh, strong like two drop. And we see a couple of options here. There's Mandible Justicier as another two drop. That's an artifact. These cards both fit into artifact decks because they are artifacts. I don't think Grotz is a playable rare. It's just too much mana. Uh, there's Charge of the Mites, which can do work as a removal spell. Pestilent Siphoner is sometimes what you want in your Corrupted decks, but I think I'm just going to take the Justicier here. You really want two drops, and I have a pretty good Artifact start. I could even wheel this Eye of Malkator. And then there's Charge of the Mites, which is a good removal spell, but I'd rather just lock up my two drops. This card isn't guaranteed to make my deck, even if I end up in white, but I think it's one of the more powerful options in the pack, because it can be a very good two drop. And I uh, have a good Artifact start. And it plays well with the Convert, because it helps recoup some of the life that you lose by using that for mana. So we could definitely end up in a blue-white artifacts deck, especially because nobody likes playing blue. Okay, so blue is looking open. There is a Orzhov Enforce, Orthodoxy Enforcer, there's Zealot's Conviction. Blue is just... There are six blue cards in this pack, and so I'm going to try to play blue here. Meldweb Strider can do good work. Uh, it's better in like decks that proliferate a bit. I'm not going to take the Fair Basilica here. I'm going to take the Transplant Theorist. Uh, it's an artifact creature, and it's going to really help me filter through my draws to make sure I never run out of artifacts. So I think that's a good pick. Instead of the Mesmerizing Dose, which is a little bit hard to cast as a removal spell. And blue-white doesn't really care about the proliferate effect. So I'm going to try to play blue-white artifacts at this point. It also is a good 4-drop to play on turn 3 with the Mirror Convert. Just sets up my draw. So I'm going to take the Theorist here over the Mesmerizing Dose. And then I'll probably wheel some Meldweb Strider action. And now there is an Eye of Malkator. I think blue is open. I think blue-white artifact is open. I haven't been seeing as many white cards. But I'm fairly certain I can draft a blue artifacts deck. There's a Furnace Strider, which is a really good card. And there's a Lattice Blade Mantis again. So we keep seeing these Lattice Blade Mantises. But I'm going to take the Eye of Malkator and try to get in this lane. I have all artifacts so far. And this is a really good card for that artifacts deck. I'm probably going to wheel some of those Eyes of Malkator. The only problem is the guy to my left is, or the person to my left is probably going to get into blue too. It's between the Lattice Blade Mantis and the Eye of Malkator. I think Eye of Malkator fits my strategy pretty well here so far though. 
the Mycosynth Gardens. I think Chrome Prowler is more is better for me. The Mycosynth Gardens can actually do some work in this deck because you have a land that can kind of tap for either color, and then you can turn it into a copy of a, a creature that you have. So you can turn it into a theorist or into an. Uh, I don't guess. Yeah, you can kind of copy your creatures with it. Chrome Prowler is nice because it has synergy with Eye of Malkator. I guess having this ability on a land is probably better still, though. Chrome Prowler is kind of replacement level, even though it is cutesy to use it with the Eye of Malkator. Yeah, I'll take the land. The land is really good in this deck. Augury. Okay, now we're seeing some red cards here, but they're not particularly good. This card's not particularly great. This card's not particularly great. So we'll take the Augury. Let's go. This is why you take some gambles. I'm so glad we have the Mycosynth Gardens now, because just being able to copy our guy is pretty good. I think this card's better. Like, the cat is really good with the Eye of Malkator and just as another artifact, but I don't think we're going to struggle to get artifacts, and this card's really good, and I'm really glad we have this land. Okay, this is going well. We wield the Meldweb Strider. Perfect, perfect. We'd definitely rather have the Meldweb Strider than the Quicksilver Fisher, because this card not only blocks better, but it's also an artifact for our synergy pieces. Like, when you have Eye of Malkator, you just want to be able to play artifacts every turn. Mirror Kinsmith could be a good artifact to play with the Mirror Convert, but I think we'll just play a couple of Meldweb Striders as our top end cards. We don't want the Sinew Dancer. We don't want this card. We'll take the Aspirant's Ascent, I think, as a combat trick versus the Bring the Ending, which we can't really afford to play because we aren't going to be toxic in them. But giving plus one, plus three, and flying is definitely an option of something we could do. Perfect. We wield the other Eye of Malkator. Nobody else is in our strategy. And uh, this also could be a good Gold Warden's Helm Angle, but... Oh my gosh, we just wield it all. We're going to bring in the, take the Logbook because it could be a very good sideboard card for certain matchups. Every card in our deck so far is an artifact, other than this Experimental Augury. So I think we're in really good shape here. The Logbook is more of a sideboard card. Because it is a bit slow. Okay. Pack two. What do we want here? Well, this pack is garbage for us. Really unlucky open here. The The main things I'm thinking about are, first of all, in, in Incisor Glider uh, is a two-drop artifact that's a flyer. But I'm not going to be corrupting them because my cards just don't care about that angle really like i have the convert then there's dune mover which is an artifact that also can help, help me hit my lands a little bit and then there's icker synthesizer which cares about non-creatures and i have seven non-creatures so icker synthesizer could be a fine two drop to play in this deck it's between that and the dune mover i think and i think i'm gonna take the synthesizer because i just think it's more powerful um i might not play it but I don't think Dune Mover is the sort of card that I really want to prioritize here. I I just don't think Incisor Glider does anything for me. Okay. Another really weak pack. This is not an artifact. It cares about casting non-creature spells, but it's just way too slow. There's Rib Skiff. Basilica Skull Bomb is actually a fine card for this deck, but I don't want to be second picking it. Oh, man. Hopefully I don't play the Acre Synthesizer. I'm hoping I just get more Mandible just to CRs and stuff. Rib Skiff, A. Eh? I think I'll just take the Basilica Skull Bomb. I don't really want to play any of these other options. These have been some really bad first couple packs here for me. But Skull Bomb is an artifact that can synergize with my stuff, at least. I could take Complete Devotion because I do have some Toxic guys. Okay, we finally get a reasonable card. I get a uh, Removal Spell. There's also Tamiya's Immobilizer, but I don't think that card's as good. So getting a nice Removal Spell is one of the few non-artifacts we'll probably play. So we're going to wheel the Gold Warden's Helm. We can take against all odds. So we can return, like, 
an eye of Malkator, and we can like re-trigger some of our stuff. There's also a Quicksilver Fisher, it, and then I think I'll wield the Gold Warden's Helm, so this should be fine. Okay. Plus two, plus two. Equip creatures indestructible. There's this guy. I'm going to be fine on the four drop slot, I think, though. There's a Mir and Bardiche. This pack is going very badly. I'm going to take the Gold Warden's Helm. It's just an artifact creature, essentially. I like a Surgical Skull Bomb. Definitely better than the Basilica Skull Bomb. It triggers my stuff, like Eye of Malkator. I can have it sit and play for that guy. It can loot. I can turn it to play with this. The Blade of Shared Souls. That's a reasonable card. Better than the Lightbringer. This pack has been really bad for me. I've gotten nothing of value from this pack. Which is crazy how considering how open the deck was pack one. We'll be fine. We still have enough playables. I just need to get more some more two drops. It's looking fairly likely that this Icker synthesizer makes it in. Okay, there's another skull bomb. There's also an incisor glider. Which is pretty much just a two drop artifact in my deck. I'm just gonna take the skull bomb. I am, I'm going to probably wheel the other incisor glider if I'm seeing this one. And Skull Bomb is a really good addition as an artifact. I currently have 14 artifacts. Wow, we didn't wheel the Dune Mover or the incisor glider. That's insane. I guess I'll take Vanish into Eternity. Must say that's a little unexpected. Gosh, what happened? This pack was so much worse. We were wheeling everything in pack one, and then pack two, it went off the rails. Kind of a nightmare scenario. Take another skull bomb. Okay. I don't love the Quicksilver Fisher in this deck. I would rather have like a artifact. So we have a, a full third pack to fill out these two drop slot. Okay, we get another near another artifact at the top, and probably better than the Fisher. Because it's an artifact for our synergy pieces. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Just honestly super unlucky openings. Like, the fact that we've opened up, like, such horrific packs tilts me a little bit. Not really tilting, but, like, like look at this pack. There's not a single good white or blue card. There's one, two, three good red cards. There's like a bunch of good... Like, we're going to have to take Incisor Glider just to get a two drop that's an artifact. Which is just terrible. We could take Sea Chrome Coast as like a land to help our mana out. But we just need to make sure we get a two drop. Gosh, so brutal. I just want to buy an uncommon that fits my colors. Okay, I'll take Serum Snare. It's not the best, but it's it's playable. There's also Chrome Prowler. There's this guy. There's Crawling Pores, which I don't think is very good in my Artifacts deck. I... I'm almost... I'm just sad. <laughs> this is... This is how it falls off the rails. Our, our, our draft started off so well, and it's just going to end in a... Sad situation. There's another cephalopod sentry. There's also a duelist and this eye of Malkator. 
We're going to take the cephalopod. Just hoping for anything cheap now. Another two drop. Let's go. This card can actually do some stuff sometimes. We don't really have any proliferate. I'm just going to take another IF Malkator. Because I is really good in our deck. Another Icker Synthesizer. Plays pretty well with I. Our deck is actually coming together now that we've got these two drops, I think. Uh, Icker Synthesizer also plays well with Serum Snare. So this is current, and also with these Skull Bombs. So we have three, four, five, six two drops. That's enough. Oh my gosh, another cephalopod sentry. There's also a mandible justiciar. How many artifacts do we have? We have 19 artifacts. This thing's going to be a huge, huge threat. Gosh, I would love to take that justiciar. My gosh. Oh my goodness. It could have even been correct to take it, but okay, we get the land on the wheel. We wield Chrome Prowler. Over experimental augury. Augury does play well with the synthesizers. But I think Chrome Prowler is a really good artifact. Better than a Gold Warden's Helm. We wield another Eye of Malkdor. Thirty-one cards here. Maybe mandible just this year would have been the correct pick, but we got six two drops, so I feel like just taking the high upside guy is really worth it. Our deck is very light on interaction. I don't think we're going to play the Tamiyo's Logbook in the main deck. It's more of our sideboard specialty card. I don't think we need Meldweb Strider either. Then I think we can cut a land. So 16 lands. Plenty of artifacts. We have 18 artifacts. These Cephalopod Sentries are going to be huge. I don't think I played Glistener Seer. It just doesn't synergize. I've got the two Skull Bombs. Serum Snare plays well with the Synthesizer. How many non-creatures do I have? 12 non-creatures. The Synthesizers are going to be great. Incisor Glider is not the best, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. It's an artifact, at least. The Transplant Theorist isn't the best either. But I have four, five, six, seven, three drops. Four, four drops. And then the rest are just two drops and ones. So I think this deck is going to be sweet. I'm excited to see how it plays out in the games. And I'll see you folks in the matches. If you have been enjoying my videos, you can help support the channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patreon is a crowdfunding site where you, the viewer, can chip in to help support the creators who you enjoy so that they can continue making the content that you like watching. And so if you're interested in Patreon, you can gain access to some cool rewards while also helping the channel grow and thrive. Special thanks to those who support the channel at the credits level. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. We'll go first. Oh, our deck does not use lands very well. I'm going to have to mulligan this. Keep and pray. I've got full control on, so my opponent doesn't know what to expect. Let's go. I will take the Microsynth Gardens. Perfect.
I'm actually going to keep both of these on top. Because then that guy will make sure I don't draw any extra lands after the fact. What's Red Gang going to do about this? This guy's a massive flyer. I'll trade the Eye of Malkator for a Chimney Rabble. Because the Eye of Malkator is going to, like, go away at some point. It does make my Cephalopod Sentry a little smaller. But this way they can't ever pressure me on the backswing, really. Gosh, that's brutal. Of course they have Shrapnel Slinger. Oh, no. Gosh. That card's so brutal against my deck. Plus two, plus two, don't they? I suspect they have plus two, plus two in their hand. But if they have plus two, plus two, they would have attacked with everyone. What combat? Oh, they have plus three, plus one. No. I don't know why they're attacking with the long legs. Maybe it's like a bluff attack. Wasn't my best attack. Nice.
I'm going to hold the land because I can loot it away with my near convert. Okay, I'm definitely going to exile that. Huge. That's going to be a great draw. I'm going to... Vorak, sure. They don't really need more land, so this is fine. So, I want this one to trigger first. I don't need to play this. I'm going to just use it to trigger my eyes. And this thing's going to be unblockable in a second. Gosh, this game is intense. I'm going to start writing down their cards. Cages, Borak, Bull Shock Splitter. I don't need the mere convert. Sure. I'm 
down to make this trade once again because my guy's not always a creature. So if they somehow turned the tide, it would end badly for me, potentially. I don't need to hold full control because I have my guy. I've seen a lot of the cards in their deck, and I think my deck is significantly better. Sure, Venomous Brutalizer. charge what that is not what I thought would happen. That's annoying. I could have copied this thing, but instead I just did nothing. Gosh, that's annoying. That was bad. Sure. It's a creature, yep. And then I loot twice. get rid of their copper long legs in theory nice wow they just take it huh. oh gosh it's a little bit risky because if they have something then they can blow me out Volt charge. We have a shrapnel slinger. Chimney Rabble, Shrapnel Slinger. So they're dead to this thing at any point in the game if they tap out to any of my two fours. I have eight cards left in my deck.
I'm just going to play it a little bit safe. So now they're dead. Now I can just safely kill them. That was a crazy game. I saw like their entire deck. So let's just, I have two minutes. I can write down their last couple cards. They have slow bad. And they have a natural restoration. So I've written down all their cards. Three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, okay, cool. So, what do I know about their deck? They've got a bunch of small creatures, but most of them have, like, one power. They've got an Axiom Engraver. Hmm. They're not the sort of deck that I want... They're not the sort of deck that I want this thing against. Mir and Bardish could be good. The O3 doesn't block that well. So this guy's just going to die to something they have. The 5-5 five five could be good, though. The 5-5 five five is bigger than everything they have. <sighs> Man. And the logbook. Yeah, I think that game was an anomaly in terms of how grindy it was. They have a burn spell, but only one that I saw, which makes the plus one plus three not super useful. So I think just bringing in the five five makes sense. I don't think the Bardiche does much. And with what I cut, they don't have anything crazy to bounce. I can bounce my own stuff to save it. Transplant Theorist was insane there. I'll cut the Basilica Skull Bomb, one of them. Even though it was really good there. They have a lot of random reach stuff that they can jump block with if I'm trying to push through with that. Okay, we'll keep this. We have the Strider. Good to know that Blade of Shared Souls can't copy an Eye of Malkator. I thought that would give me a 4-4, but it does not. Nice, we drew a 2-drop. And we can copy it with Blade of Shared Souls. If we want. We'd rather probably copy this with Blade of Shared Souls. Yep, they just go for the bluff attack. Well, those are both insane draws. We'll definitely keep both. The cephalopod sentries are insane in our deck.
If they trade here, that's so good for me. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Pretty much exactly what I want to see. They have a Koldotha Cackler. Like, they don't have any combat tricks from what I saw in game one, which really gives me a lot of confidence when I'm blocking. So they're going to use the Volt Charge. Sure. I'm going to play the Meldweb Strider because it lets me play offense and defense. I can now attack past the Long Legs. Next turn I can play the Sentry. Uh, crew this guy up, hit them with that and my other Sentry. And then I still have this on defense. So they have two autonomous forges. It just gives me... A, the reason I write down all the cards they play is because it gives me a lot of confidence when I'm playing future games. Where it's like, okay, these are the things they could have. This land is so good. It's going to turn into a cephalopod sentry. Okay, they have a Luka. Sure. Sure. Well, I kind of have to do this now. So that's huge, knowing that they have Luka. Oh, they get him back. Bummer. Gosh, that's kind of annoying. Luckily, I have the Blade of Shared Souls that can copy the Chrome Prowler. Oh, no, I guess that doesn't, isn't how that works. The Meldweb Strider is doing work here, holding them back. Hold the line! Gosh, Blade of Shared Souls does not work with Chrome Prowler the way I want it to. <laughs> They're just super dead, right?
Got him. Woo! Round one is in the books. Let's go. Wow, that was a crazy one. See you folks next round. Welcome to round two. We're going to play first. And we have a keeper. What a hand. What a hand. Even though this can trigger the Malkator, we're still going to just play it. We have so many artifacts in our deck that just having an extra guy in play for our Cephalopod Sentry is good. And I think we are just going to use the Mere Convert to attack and stuff. We don't need to ramp out anything right now. Malkator into Sentry is just the best curve our deck has. that but i do like that one i'll trade it makes my cephalopod sentry a little bit worse but makes it so they can't start stacking on me sure Ash. Just going to be mana efficient here. There's not that much removal they could have that would kill the sentry. I'm not really planning on blocking with the sentry if they attack either. Because the sentry is such a crazy good attacker for me. Like it's a 4-5 flyer. And I'm not going to let it die to a complete devotion to save myself 3 points of damage. Sure. If we scry an artifact to the top, we'll play this so we can do a little bit more damage. I'm going to sacrifice this artifact. I think, actually. No, I won't. Because I want it in play so I can bounce something. And then, with my other Skull Bomb, I still have a lethal flyer. They can do 1, 2, 3, 4 poison to me. So I'll be at 5 poison. I assume they have plus two, plus two. Yeah. So I'm taking one, two, three more toxic. Not going to let them tap my guy.
I'll play the land for now. So they have to kill my cephalopod sentry here. Size or glider, sure. My creatures are just huge. They have to chump my flyer, chump my 4 4, and then I still have two lethal attackers. They have to have a combat trick here to live. That's unfortunate. So they have an offer immortality. So the reason I'm bouncing this is because now they'll have to chump my incisor glider and somehow deal with that guy. Oh my gosh. They'll tap my flyer and then chump my other guy or something. Played the land so I could play another three drop if I found one. I'm doing it this way because even though I can't trigger this next turn, they have a 6-6 blocker for it. And this way I can, like, protect my cephalopod sentry or something. From removal. Flensing Raptor, sure. Got 
Got the win. Okay. They have a flensing raptor too. So the, pre the I, if they only had complete devotion, I might bring in my plus one plus three to try and blow out their plus one plus, plus two plus two. But this one makes that much worse of a plan. They also have a lot of flyers, a lot of evasion, a lot of early game. Which makes me not really want the meld web strider. The O3 can block the 2 2 and the 1 1. But it doesn't do much else for me. And I have 1 3s that do that pretty well. I'm just tempted to bring in this thing. It just doesn't seem like it'll do what I want. <gasps> I think I can cut a Basilica Skull Bomb on the draw. I don't think it's a grindy to match up for the log book. What would I bring in for the Skull Bomb? The O3. It's not an artifact, but I like having an extra blocker that can block their 1 1 double striker. Because that card's really annoying. Okay, this is a bad hand, but I think it's a keep. We just have to hope to draw some stuff. Okay, Sinew Dancer, sure. That's a good one. I think we'll lead with the Synthesizer so we can get that stacking. Okay. Sure. Hoping for the best, blocking this Jawbone Duelist. Oh, gosh. The pain. The agony. Don't do it, opponent. Okay. Hmm. Will I be able to stop them if I play this incisor glider? The odds are very low that I will successfully stop them, so I'm just going to go for this. Well, that's a good draw. Yep, I'm going to go like this. Play my 4-drop on turn 4. On turn 5, I'll play the Annex Sentry plus something else. I'll be corrupted, but I'll be in good shape here. Sure. The Annex Sentry is going to do a good job catching me back up, and the Eye of Malkator will help me continue to pressure them. Annex Sentry can tap down there, get rid of their Sinew Dancer so they can't tap my guys all over and over. And then Incisor Glider is a good blocker against their 1-1 and their 2-2. They have a Noit with Affliction. That's good to know. Okay, so they're holding up their white mana for the Sinew Dancer.
Bash for four. I've got good blocks here. Eight poison is a lot, though, so I really don't want to go to nine, because then I die to any proliferate spell. Or another infectious inquiry or something. I don't think I've seen any proliferate spells from them. But a Whisper of the Dross would be a reasonable card for them to have and stuff. Oh, man. Looks like they don't have any obvious attacks. And next turn I can play Incisor Glider and I have Malkator. I'd much rather have played the Incisor Glider than this Mirror Convert because it's a way better blocker. But I just don't have the white mana. But next turn, if this thing's still alive, I can like threaten lethal. So I'll have to chump block my Eye of Malkator, which is huge. Okay. Okay. I'll try to find like a chrome cat or something. So if I attack with everything, this thing will just eat that. So I'm not going to attack. I'm just going to attack for four. They're going to tap my guy. I get to block a couple things and then go to nine poison. This is an insanely close game. Okay, sure. That card doesn't really matter. Actually, that card matters a lot. What am I saying? So depending on how this goes, I could potentially go for some crazy block, then use Mirror Convert as a bounce spell. That was a really unlucky top deck for me to see. Oh my gosh, it's going to game three. Gosh darn it. If they hadn't top decked that, I would have won. Because they would have attacked with everything I block, I go for the Serum Snare. It's just over then. Gosh, that's unlucky. They have a minus four, minus four, and a Charge of the Mites. So this thing actually has like some major potential in saving guys. Now that I'm on the play, I don't need the Glisteners here as much. I want to keep my artifact count high. Oh, that's so, so dumb.
I think I played that game really well. I was so close. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna ditch the blade. I think they also mulliganed. So that should help a little. Not where you love to be. Nice. Take the skull bomb. That's a great draw. We'll scry. Keep any spell, pretty much. I don't know why it would have tapped me like that. Like, it doesn't punish me, but the fact that it, like... Doesn't let me hold the activation on it with the way it tapped my mana is just insane to me. Oh gosh. They're gonna miss a land drop, aren't they? Or they were gonna miss a land drop. I don't really care about this at the moment. So I'm just going to go for the... the maximum damage line. Because I only have one Toxic. This thing becomes a problem once I have more, and they're also just crammed on cards in hand. And now this turn I can double spell. I can play Disruption and Annex Entry. I'm in really good shape this game. Really good shape, really, 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 really good shape. The fact that they had to use their thing like that is really good for me. Sure. Get rid of it. They're the only guy that can help block. If they have a removal spell, I can Serum Snare my Sentry back to my hand. My Icar Synthesizer is going to be really big soon. They somehow have hit land drops every single turn after missing one almost. Oh, the effect still goes on the stack. Dang it. I punted that. They're still dead on board.
Gosh darn it. I needed to bounce their guy before, so that would have killed them this turn. Yes! Got the win. Huge. Huge victory. 2-0. See you folks next round. Welcome to round three. Nikolai wins the die roll once more. And we have a keeper. Holy heck, if we hit one land, this hand becomes so good. If we don't draw land on our first draw step, we're probably going to augury just so we can maximize the odds of going IF Malkator into Cephalopod Sentry. Just because it would be really, really, really good. Let's go. Never mind. We just get to go perfect, amazing draw. Because this will give me two, a scry to find another one. My gosh. Sure. Okay, I don't need that one, but I do like the Skull Bomb. Because then I can go Eye of Malkator plus Skull Bomb after I play... I'm going to play my Sentry this turn. But now I can go Eye of Malkator, Skull Bomb. Sure. I'm going to see what I scry to see whether or not I want to play the Skull Bomb. Okay, I don't think I want the Theorist right now. Actually, maybe I do. In external, I'll go Skull Bomb, double Theorist. Because next time I can go Bounce plus Skull Bomb. Sure. I guess I could have bounced my own cephalopod sentry. Maybe that would have been better. Huge. We got there. Maybe I was supposed to keep the 2-4 just for the guaranteed trigger, because that was kind of close. <sighs> they have a cruel Grimnark. Cruel Grimnark does make me kind of want to bring the ending. I think I'm going to bring in the Tamiya's Logbook out of the sideboard for the grindier game here. I'm going to cut a Basilica Skull Bomb. Because Basilica Skull Bomb gets a lot worse when they have instant speed removal that kills anything.
Gosh, this game is so intense. They only played three spells that game. My deck was just cruising. The Sea Chrome Coast is actually good in my deck. Really helps me make sure I have consistent mana. Okay, we're going to keep this. It's not the best hand I've ever had. But that certainly helps. Man, our deck really, really wants us to win. That was such a good draw. My goodness. Sure. I'm not going to be able to block with this, and I want to use the equip to good use. Uh, I don't need either of these. Because I want to make another copy of Cephalopod Sentry. I'm officially corrupted. They have another sacrifice. Okay. Next turn, I have the Annex Sentry to take care of the Pestilent Siphoner. Got the win. Let's go. Huge. Heck yeah, I had fun. Whew. We've guaranteed our slot in the second pod. Let's try to get a little bit of double elimination action. See you folks in the next round. Welcome to the final round. I've already qualified for the day the second pod, but this if I win this one, I'll have an extra life. So much better odds of making it to the cash. We will play first. We've been winning every die roll. And they mulliganed. Huge. So if we don't hit a land drop, I'm going to cycle this. On turn two, probably. Just because I have Malkator into Cephalopod Sentry is just such an incredible sequence. Nice! This is like the, the dream. Everything's coming together perfectly every time. It's just working out so nicely for me. Okay, I'm not going to attack with this because it's not a good damage trade. And also, I don't want to get corrupted potentially.
I'll keep both of these, honestly. I, I'm i not super worried about not hitting my uh, land for a little bit. Because I only my curve stops at 4. And this thing will do a bunch of damage in the meantime. And then when I do play it, it'll just be huge. Maybe keeping this cephalopod sentry was a bit greedy. But we'll see. Sure. Oh my gosh, the dream. I get the planner disruption it. Well, for starters, I'm going to bounce it. Actually, no. Archfiend of Dross, eh? They're gonna have to figure out a way to sacrifice it, or they're just gonna lose. So, I can... Bounce that. I'll say it. Definitely a bit greedy on the cephalopod sentry thing. I'm winning on two different axes here. They're going to die to their own archery to the draws in two turns. But I'm also just killing them with normal damage. I'm not going to count on this winning me the game. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. Because they could just have proliferate or something. Okay, I lose two life. So I'm going to lose a little bit more life here. This thing will die next turn if they don't figure out a way to stop it. Oh, okay, so they aren't going to die to it. Okay. Okay. 
I don't think I could have killed them. If I sacrifice this, it's only net one damage. So now they have to draw something. Got there. Oh my gosh. Okay. They have a volt charge. They have a hex volt slash. They have doom mover. That guy. So with the damage based removal, I kind of want to bring in this. Especially on the draw. I don't really want the grindy element. This thing can take care of the Archfiend of the draws. They also just have like a bunch of like random artifacts, it feels like. But getting rid of Archfiend seems important. And I don't really have ways to do that other than like bouncing it a few times. So maybe I need this thing i can also block it but this is tough archfiend is really good against me i don't think i can afford to bring in to bring the ending I'm just going to hope they don't draw it, I guess. Or that I draw my one answer. Because that card is brutal against me. Okay, we'll keep this. Due to the nature of this hand, I'm not going to play the Skull Bomb on turn one. Because I need ways to trigger these. If I'm mere convert, I can play double Icker Synthesizer the following turn. So if they attack, it probably means they have Volt Charge. Sure, okay. I definitely want to draw a land next turn. Here, I'm going to hold back. I could hit them for four, and they'd hit me back for four, but looking at the life totals, that doesn't seem advantageous at the moment. I don't think they have Archfiend to the Dross right now. Okay. The Serum Core is going to be a problem going forward at some point. Oh, no. That's bad.
Definitely want Annex Sentry. Maybe I should have chumped it. I was thinking about it. I need to be able to turn on my uh, Eye of Malkator's next turn. Pretty much all that matters. Oh, if they don't attack here, they are in trouble. They have to attack. And then just hope I can't get an artifact. Okay, 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 okay. Let's think, Nikolai. They have three blockers. They can go... So... This will kill me next turn. If I manage to turn on both of my Eye of Malkators... They have three blockers. I have... Oh my gosh. If I bounce their Serum Core command... No, can't. I have to do this. That is such an unbelievably good draw. That's game, right? I tap this thing... I play this. Tap their guy. They have two blockers. They block both my eye of Malkators. So if I tap their Serum Core Chimera. Attack, you know, if I tap their Ovi Ovika, attack with everything, they block, block, they take one, two, three, four, and they live. If I'd used this, would I have been able to force it block? I don't think so. So I attack with these three. They have to block at least one eye, so they'll go block. Eat there. So if I have to attack with everything.
Dang it. If I had tapped this thing down, they would have still won. Dang it. Oh, I needed them not to have another flyer. Gosh darn it. That was so close. Okay. I'm running it back. Gosh, that was so close. I was like inches away. The problem was they had two flyers and I was at a low enough life total that because of the ward I couldn't just tap their guy on their turn. Okay, this is my hand. This is this is the dream hand, honestly. And they're mulliganing. Lead with this skull bomb, because I'm more likely to sack that one to just draw a card. need this land so badly. Okay, they have all their colors. This is my chance. Boom! There we go. I'll make the trade. If they quad block, I'll trade it for the Charforger. Got the hit in. Okay, nice. Hopefully they don't have Archfiend to the draw. So let's go. They don't. No idea what the... Oh, it's, it's a Volt Charge. I'm so far in the lead here. Oh my gosh. <sighs> if they play the draw, so I can bounce it and keep smacking them. I have a 5 5 flyer. It's crazy. And I haven't seen any removal that can kill it either. I know they have Volt Charge, so... So I don't want to fall too low, life total-wise, because they can Bolt me. Sure. So I'll go to nine. Send them to one. 
I think their last card is a deal three. And they have two, four, five. So I'll block this guy. Like, I'm nearly positive this is Volt Charge, and I can beat Volt Charge. Four, seven, eight. Even if they have Volt Charge and they top deck Hex Gold Slash, I still win. Oh my gosh. Can I beat two Volt Charges? They kill both my guys. They do four, six, seven. Four, six, seven. I'm fairly certain they have Volt Charge in hand. Based on the fact that they were attacking with Charforger and nothing else. Oh my gosh. I think this secures the victory for me. Because I'm fairly certain they have two Volt Charges. They can double Volt Charge my Cephalopod Sentry, but then my Mere Convert wins me the game. I just had to make sure I didn't die to the Centurion. They have to Volt Charge something here. Let's go! Four and oh. That's what I'm talking about. I'm in really good position for the next draft. I have two lives, and I need to get, like, any amount of wins will get me some... It's a... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's go! Huge! Let's go, Artifacts, baby! Artifacts for the win. That's such a good draft. Holy heck. We read the signals perfectly. I identified it being open. Wheeled those eyes of Malkators. Got super late Cephalopod sentries. Let's go! Holy heck, holy heck, holy heck, holy heck. Oh my goodness. Well, we're in day two and it's double elimination. My gosh. I think it's one win is 500, two wins is 1,000, three wins is 2,000 or something like that. But I think you get money with any amount of wins. Holy heck. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Huge victory. Huge Let's go. Okay, well, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm sure you'll want to catch the next draft that I post on my channel where it'll be the one that I go for the ultimate value. But what a what a draft, honestly. Like, going Eye of Malkator into Cephalopod Sentry was absolutely huge. Blade of Shared Souls copying Cephalopods. Just great two drops. We drew, like, incredibly well. We won, like, every die roll drew incredibly well. And we had a sick deck, so really pretty much just the, the dream so leave hashtag dream artifact in the comment section down below if you made it all the way till the end of this video let me know what you think hit that thumbs up button subscribe for more content and i will catch you in my next draft